Okay, this is Open Systems, and we are going through the quiz. So this is the Open Systems quiz. In uh, in Fermi. All right, question one: the property of a substance. What does specific mean? What does specific mean? So we use we use specific enthalpy, specific heat capacity, all these specific ones. Well, specific means per kilogram. Specific. So if I give you the specific heat capacity of water, 4.19 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin, that means if you have one kilogram of water and you increase the temperature by one degree Celsius, it's going to take 4.19 kilojoules to do that. Of course, if you've got 10 litres of water, then uh, it's going to take 10 litres much bigger. Cooling and pressurising steam back into water. So when it turns back into water, so it's going from a gas into a liquid. What's that? Well, we've got evaporation and condensation. They're opposites. So we can evaporate or we can dense. Condensation. So guess which one it is. Question three, steam is heated above the boiling point. So it's above the boiling point. All right, now, if if uh, if you have a container, we, we actually did uh, a little thought experiment on water. We've got water in here, and the, and the top is um, gas. So in here we have all the gas particles, and in here we have water. So what's happening in this situation is that the <coughs> let's make it look pretty shall we so what we're talking about there is that that's in saturation so when something is in saturation that means the amount of evaporation liquid going into gas is equal to the amount of condensation gas going into liquid. So they're in equilibrium. That's saturation. But if you heat all the water out of there and it's all steam and you keep heating, you've gone above the boiling point now. Okay, and when you go above the boiling point, that's called superheated. Of course, uh, if you're running a steam turbine or something, you want to stay superheated because the last thing you want is for the steam to turn into water halfway through the turbine and smash into the blades with water droplets. You wreck it. So they have to keep the uh, the steam hot enough to be superheated, which also means that the exhaust on a steam turbine has still got a lot of energy in it. We're looking at the steam turbine here. And that's one of the unfortunate things about it because you can't get all the energy out of the steam because if you do, it'll turn into water and then you can run into trouble. Speaking of steam turbines, question four is a steam turbine. And it's uh, <clears throat> got some numbers there. So the steam turbine outputs 601 kilowatts of, at steam flow rate 2.4 kilogram per second. Specific, specific, remember specific is per kilogram. Now, in thermodynamics, um, we've come up with some different terms and things. Like there's U, which is internal energy. And there's H, which is enthalpy. If you use a capital H, that's total enthalpy. If you use a little h, that's specific enthalpy. Specific enthalpy. It's hard to say. So specific is per kilogram. <clears throat> so you can look up the specific enthalpy of something in a table, and it'll say, oh, you know, it's 3,000 uh, kilojoules per kilogram. Notice it says per kilogram anyway. So that proves that it's uh, per one kilo. So that would be a little h, and it's the inlet, so we call that little h1. The outlet will be little h2. Find the heat flow per second of the turbine. So uh, <clears throat> this is all based on the first law of thermo. Now, we saw the first law of thermo. first time we saw it was it said um, u2 minus u1 equals heat minus work. 
That's the first time I saw it. And U was internal energy. But then it got a bit more fancy where we changed it into H2 minus H1. That's what it is in this chapter because now we're dealing with not only change of the temperature of the substance, which is the internal energy, but also there can be compression and expansion as well. And enthalpy allows for compression and expansion because enthalpy is defined as U plus PV. All right, so it's a bit, this was a bit, uh, a bit more fancy version of the first law of thermodynamics. This is the one we have to use here because we're dealing with enthalpy. Okay, now this is the first law of thermo, which is what we're going to be using here. And we just have to plug in the numbers. And what are we trying to find? We're trying to find the heat flow of the turbine. Guess which one that is? That's the Q. So we're trying to find Q. Do we have the work? Yes, the turbine output 601 kilowatts. Yes, we got that one. We got the specific enthalpy inlet. That's the H1. And the outlet, H2. The only problem is we've got them as little h's so because they're specific. We have to turn specific into total. How do we do that? Well, total enthalpy equals the mass times the specific enthalpy. So if you've got two kilograms, then the total is twice as high as specific too. That's hard enough. So we're going to do a um, thermodynamic trick, which we do in just about every question, and that is this one. We're going to do everything per second. The reason we do that is because if you have a kilojoule per second, that's the same as a kilowatt. So things convert really easy. <clears throat> so we need to find our total enthalpy H1 and H2. So here's our inlet <clears throat> H1 equals now the mass flow rate is 2.4. So remember I said per second, so we're doing this for one second. So in one second, the total enthalpy in one second is 2.4 kilograms times a H1, which is 3021. And that gives us a value of... So we've got 7250.4. <coughs> H2 works exactly the same way. It's still the same mass flow rate because it's going right through the whole thing. Times, this time it's 2676. And that's uh, kilojoules. Notice we don't write kilojoules per kilogram anymore. This said kilojoules per kilogram. We don't go per kilogram because we've already multiplied by kilograms, which is not set out. So that's just kilojoules. Just like almost the other, all the other things in thermodynamics, it's all about kilojoules. Uh, if you're not sure in thermo, have a guess, it's probably measured in joules or kilojoules. Okay, now we're ready for our first law of thermo. Here it is up here. H2 minus H1 equals Q minus W. We'll rearrange this though because what we're after is Q. So that means Q equals H2 minus H1 plus W. Great, so I'll move it over here. So we've got room Q is H2, which is this one here, minus H1, which is this one here. So I'll speed this up. There's one there.
So H2 minus H1. Plus work. Work is 601. Now we're just going to check our units here because <clears throat> make sure we're consistent. So 601 is in kilowatts. Kilowatts. That one's kilojoules, but we're doing it per second. So that's kilojoules per second, which is kilowatts. So everything here is in kilojoules per one second which is equivalent to kilowatts. That's it. So let's calculate that one. Now, uh, the other thing we need to check is uh, what's happening with the enthalpy anyway. H2 is the outlet. H2 is 6.4 and inlet is 7.2. So the steam is coming in with more energy and it's losing energy. And it's got 6.4 on the way out. So it's 7.2 on the way in. That seems to make sense because it's losing energy to the turbine. <coughs> so we have uh, H2 there, subtract H1, which gives us minus 828, plus we add 601 equals minus 227. So we get the answer here is negative. Two to seven kilowatts. Okay, so it's the heat flow per second of the turbine. Now remember, with heat, positive heat is in, negative heat is out. Does that make sense? Well, we have negative heat, so we're losing heat, and that's this heat coming out here. So we're losing 227 kilowatts, kilojoules per second. Um, from heat. All right, so let's see if that works. 227 kilowatts. Check number. Oh, I should have put minus. Oh, that was silly. It should be minus 227. Ah, it's negative. I'm going to get the right sign. Okay. Steam boiler. <clears throat> okay, just double checking if I did get that number right. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, minus 2 to 7 is the correct answer. Good. <clears throat> okay, now we have a steam boiler. Steam boilers are actually a bit easier. Uh, the thing about a boiler is, if you look at the second law of, I mean, sorry, the first law of thermo. Gee, we haven't even done the second law. The first law of thermo yeah, in uh, open systems, H2 minus H1 equals heat minus work. Guess what? When you're working with a heat, heat exchanger or boiler, there ain't any work. There's nothing moving. The whole thing's still, so W doesn't even come into it. So H2 minus H1 equals heat. That's actually a little bit easier. All right. So uh, let's go through the numbers. What ends the boiler specific enthalpy? So the, this is once again, this, we've got H1, it's the inlet is 171 kilojoules per kilo <clears throat> and we're going through this many kilograms per hour now uh, why on earth we do it by hour what we're trying to do is per second so we have to divide by how many seconds in an hour so this kilograms per hour needs to be converted over we have 24 980 divided by 
3600, that's seconds in an hour. Kilograms every second. <clears throat> All right. So uh, here we are, we've just worked at our mass flow rate per second, that's the one we need. And now we're going to set up our first little thermo to find, what are we trying to find? A heat flow per second, so there's your heat flow per second, guess what variable that is, Q. And we got the specific enthalpy at the outlet, so H2 is 2467. Does that make sense? It's coming in at 171 and coming out at 2467. Yes, so it's getting a lot more energy once it's gone through the boiler, which makes sense. And we're trying to find Q. Well, the first law of thermo is um, going to tell us Q straight away. We just go H2 minus H1. However, we have to convert it to H1. Capital H equals little h1 m. And we're doing it per second, so it's m dot per second. Dot means per second, <clears throat> which is h1 is 171 times that 69388. And that gives us that value. So it's times 171. And that's killer joules, not joules per killer now. H2, of course, is H2 and dot, which is 2467 times that 69. Okay, so the uh, from the first law of thermo now, Q equals H2 minus H1, which is just that thing minus that thing. <coughs> so we've got our 17, subtract. And that's kilowatts. Find the heat flow flow per second in or out. Now, because H2 minus H1, if you obey uh, final and initial, it will already automatically sort out plus or minus signs. <clears throat> but if you think about it, if it's a steam boiler, remember if if it's if heat is in, it's positive if heat is out, like it was in the previous question, it's negative. So that does make sense. 
So it should be 15, 931. And that is in kilowatts. Okay, now this one is a continuation, the same question, blah, 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 blah. Find the heat wave assuming 10% heat loss. Yeah, it says best to me. Right, <clears throat> this time there's heat just escaping from our heat exchanger. And the amount of heat that we're losing is 10% of, what, of what's uh, being put into it. <clears throat> so the heat which we already know is H2 minus H1. It's a little bit like a GST question. You've got to be careful with 10% because you, got, uh, you don't always multiply by 0.9, etc. So just do it carefully. All right. The, we need to have this H2 minus H1. That's what has to happen to the water. But we also have to add another 10% of the heat here because otherwise we won't get all that heat because it'll, it'll, uh, that's how much is escaping. So we have to add another 10% of heat into this. So it should just be 15,931 plus another 10%. So the total Q that you have to put in equals the heat into the water plus a tenth of that. And one and one tenth is 1.1 lots of it. So it's nice and simple. So there's 15 times 1.1 equals 17,525. Okay, and another variation on a uh, boiler is a heat exchanger. Now, a heat exchanger converts the heat from one liquid into, or one fluid into another fluid. Um, quite often, usually they're um, liquid to liquid. So, for example, you might have oil in that's being cooled by water, uh, which is exactly what this is. We are using seawater. Instead of a radiator, we have seawater run through. Um, the outside of the tubes and the inside of the tubes has got the oil in it and it cools down the oil. <coughs> okay, so uh, the trick with these though is that the amount of heat coming out of one is equal to the amount of heat going into the other. So Q out of fluid one equals heat in of fluid two. That's it. So we just have to find the fluid that we can work out the heat for, and then we apply that amount of heat to the other fluid. All right, so which fluid do we know everything about? Water enters at degrees, exits at this degrees. Oil enters at this degrees. At this many litres per minute, oil must be cooled to 96 times the heat flow per second. All right, so we have to decide what is it, what is it that... <coughs> um, 
oil. Oil enters at 153, and we've got the liters. See, what we don't have, we don't have the liters of water, right? So there's no way we can work out specific um, all the energy of the water because we don't know how much water is going through. But we do have, know how much oil is going through. Oil enters at 153 degrees <clears throat> and it's going at 86 litres per minute. And it must be cooled to 96 degrees. So we can work out how much energy does it take to do that to the oil. Alright, so we've got 86 litres per minute. Well, that's once again, if you know wrong, we've got to get 86 over 60. And in first second, we always do everything in first second. And that's uh, kilograms per second. So we need we need to do that always per second. Okay, find the find the heat flow per second of the oil. Find the heat flow per second of the oil. That's all it's asking here. So technically we can ignore the water at this point. We'll worry about that later in probably the next question. So the oil is 1.4 kilograms of oil. Is at 153 degrees and it's cooled down to 96 degrees. Guess what sort of question this is? Remember way back in this Q equals M C delta T. Remember that thing? Heat equals M C delta T. We've got the M 1.4, the C over here, water. I mean, you shouldn't memorize water by now, but 4.19 and delta T is the temperature difference between. Um, those two, so delta T will be 153 minus 96 7 degrees there M is our 1.4 kilograms. Remember, this is done per second, as we always do. So, for one one second's worth of heat, we're trying to calculate heat. <clears throat> um, message there from Josh. Watch out for the specific the um, the weight of oil. Very good. <clears throat> That's litres per minute, 86 litres per minute. Good pick up because oil has a relative density of 0.91. So watch out for this. We've got to multiply that times 0.91. Gives us the actual kilograms because that's, that's litres per second there. Now it's kilograms per second. And C is our 4.19, which we get from there. Alright, so the amount of heat is M 1.3. I'm going to run out of space here. M times C four point one nine. Just make sure the units are right. This is in kilojoules, and we're going to be doing this one in kilojoules as well. So that's good. Four point one nine. 
times the delta t, which is 57 degrees. And the oil. The oil has been cooled down by that amount. So uh, what was it again? Q, if it's positive, it's in. If it's negative, it's out. So what should it be? It should be minus Excel spreadsheet now, don't you? 86. Fifty three to ninety six fifty seven, that's all right. Mm -hmm, Four three liters per second, so yeah, kilograms is less, that's right. And C is four point one. Oh, <coughs> Gumbo. Guess what the mistake is? I used the wrong specific heat capacity. Uh, 4.19 is for water. Uh, we're supposed to be using this one. 1.8 for oil. Damn. So there's our mistake right there. I'll just go over this in red. Like I'm a teacher. Wrong specific heat capacity. Dumbo, that's supposed to be 1.8 there. <clears throat> Which means <clears throat> 
So it's easier to cool the oil down than, it, than if you were trying to cool down water. Uh, okay, let me just do this now. Water in 54, 25C is. D is all in. A is. Is minute. And F is 96. And the answer is 133. Um, that one there, 133. Correct. Well, we did get it right once we use the right C. Okay, now question eight. Continuation, same question, obviously. <clears throat> Find the water mass flow rate, which is obviously. Uh, the next logical step. So we know how much heat is coming out of the oil, but that's how much heat is going into the water. So it's this much heat. That's Q. So Q into the water equals Q out of the oil. So this is water. And this is oil. And that equals 133.82 kilowatts. Okay, so that's how much heat we need to do to the water. And we've got these numbers for the water, entry and exit. So Q equals MC delta T. We have our delta T. Because the water goes this from this to this, so yes, we have delta T, we have C, of course, we have Q, and we're trying to find M. Okay, so we can rearrange this one M equals Q over C delta T. <clears throat> Work each one out here, delta T is. Um, it's T2 final minus initial, so um, 29, X is at 29, 29.2 minus 15.4. Yeah, 29.9 minus 15.4. 3.5 degrees. That's my delta T. Uh, and, and Q is that one there. And C, we have, well, right, put those numbers in. Q is 133.82 over C. This time it's water. I can use 4.19. And temperature difference is. Nice, so ugly, isn't it? Four point one nine for water times fourteen point five for the temperature difference. Put those numbers in. Three point eight two divided by watch out when you have brackets uh, when you have fractions always use brackets close the bracket all right so just double check 133.82 divided by 4.1 times 4.5 and that gives us 60.75 this is a double check let's have a look how much oil will we running through well, how much oil was it? It was up here. The amount of oil running through was 1.3 kilograms 
per second, we've got 60 kilos. And the water is going from 15 to 29, oil is going from 150 to 90. So what is the temperature difference in this one? 57 degrees difference. And whereas 14 degrees difference. So it's about the same. <coughs> it's about a quarter of that. Where's my mass so far? I'm going to do that one again. Oh, my job will be eight times. Yeah, eight equals 2.2. That's more like it. 2.2 or 2.6. Oh, yeah, that's kilograms. And this is all per second, of course, as it always is. So it's good enough for a second. Same thing. Find the water mass flow rate. So we're saying that it's 2.2026, and that's the kilograms per second. Good. Okay. Question 9, we have the steam turbine again, and uh, this is uh, an entropy question. We're doing the first law of thermo, that's what we've been doing all day, which is now in enthalpy terms, H2 minus H1 equals heat minus work. Right, so that is the first law of thermo, and what's H doing in the case of a turbine? Well, we've got Enthalpy coming in at point one. So this is our one and this is our two. So it's in and out. One is the in, two is the out. So this is our enthalpy coming in, total enthalpy. And this is our total enthalpy coming out. Okay. So there's a difference. So this energy is being taken out of the steam. And when it's being taken out, it's doing two things. It's making some work happen, which is this one over here, getting some work done. And we're also losing some heat, which is our Q over here. All right. So our first job is to work out our H1, H2. We have a steam flow rate there in kilograms per minute. So our mass flow rate, which is in kilograms per second, will be 84 over 60, which is 1.4 kilograms per second. So that's mass flow rate. And now we have our H1 and H2, the inlet one, so that's H1. And the outlet one, that's H2. Notice these are lowercase h's. These ones are capitals. All right, so how do we convert lowercase to capital? Well, we use the equation. So H equals mass times little h. So in the case of 1, H1 equals little h1. Now this is per second, we're doing everything per second, like just about every question in the whole quiz. And the reason we do everything in seconds is because then kilowatts and kilojoules are the same, which makes things really easy because a kilojoule per second is a kilowatt. All right, so H1 equals mass flow rate, which is 1.4 times specific entropy in 3090 which gives us twenty-six, and that's in kilojoules. Exactly the same for H2, which was the mass flow rate times H2. Don't forget, we would normally not put a flow rate there, but we're allowed to do this because it's per second. 1.4 times, and the other number is 2600. So H2 has less entropy. 1.4 times. Forty-four H2. 
that's also in killage it's always keep an eye on your units make sure they're um, consistent all right now what are we trying to do here let's just make sure we know uh, where we're going with this formula so we've got h1 h2 so those two are both done what else have we got in the question heat is lost da, da, da. so there's my heat which is a q so i have my q and find the power output well that's your w so i'm trying to find w so we're going to rearrange the equation in terms of w so um, put the w on the other side we'll have w equals q and then we put h2 on the other side it's positive so it becomes a negative so minus h2 and the minus h1 becomes a plus h1 and the heat is 115 one, one, five. Is that correct? No, that's wrong. Why is that wrong? Don't forget with heat, we have positive heat and we have negative heat. What's the difference? Well, it's positive heat when the heat is going in and it's negative heat when the heat is going out. What's happening here? Heat is going out, so that's a negative heat. So that 115 is minus minus our h2 which is 3640 plus h1 which is 4326 so 3640 sign change and minus 571 kilojoules. I'm having trouble operating my mouse because there's our 571,000 joules. Okay, so that's correct. Couldn't move my mouse because I dropped the pen on the board. So the answer is 571, and the units there will be kilojoules. That's it. Now we have a couple more heat exchangers. Mission 10. Heat exchangers are easy. <coughs> And it heats up 13 cubic meters of water from that of that in four hours. Exhaust flow rate. No, that I find the heat flow of the water. So it's a bit like the one we had before. And you've got a little bit different um, calculations to do this time. 13 cubic meters in 4.6 hours. So we're going to turn that into a mass flow rate. <coughs> so 13 cubic meters. And because it's water and it doesn't say salt levels or anything that'll be 13,000 kilograms per hour no 4.6 hours so it's 4.6 times 3600 kilograms per second. Um, notice I'm keeping five uh, significant figures, so I can keep going there in decimal places. All right, now that water is going from 10 to 79 in, uh, in that 4.6 hours, so we can work out the amount of heat that that is. <clears throat> of course, that's in 4.6 hours, though. Be careful. Because we're trying to do this per second, I forget. Or as we remind ourselves, we're doing per second. <clears throat> so 
So the water is going, the, the amount of water we're converting is only 0.7 of a kilogram that's changing that temperature. Right, so Q equals MCWT, which is 0.7 times C, make sure we get the right one, it's water, marine heats water, okay. 4.9, so we get that right. Times the temperature difference here, delta T is 79.1 minus 10.7. 8 8.4 degrees. So that's our delta T, 68.4. Okay. Okay, <clears throat> find the heat flow per second of the water. Now, what is the water doing? It's going from cold to hot. All right, remember the rule? When heat is coming, when uh, heat is positive, it's in. When heat is negative, it's out. So what's happening here? It's heating up, so the heat should be positive, so it should be 224. You probably just write 225 in there. Mm -hmm. Correct. Question 11. Continuation, obviously, of one temperature drop of the exhaust. That's the delta T for the other fluid, which is our um, exhaust flow rate. Marine, uh, The exhaust heats there. Oh, the exhaust here's the here's our value for the exhaust. All right. So don't forget with a heat exchanger, the heat coming in equals heat going out. So the heat of one equals the heat of the other. So we had water. Uh, the heat going into the water. Looking at yeah, it's heating up. So the heat going into the water equals the heat going out of the exhaust. Because we're cooling our exhaust down for some reason. Actually, we might just be using the exhaust to heat up water. So make hot water. All right, exhaust rate is 9 point. So we already know uh, Q, and this is the equation MC delta T, famous equation, first one we ever saw, and we're still using it. And what do we have here? Well, let's have a look. We've got 9.3 kilograms per second, so that's M. We know the C because we have the C over here, this one. And we also know Q because that's the same as the other one, so therefore we can find T. So let's rearrange this formula to find delta T. So delta T is equal to Q over MC. Q is the one we had before, 
over m, which is 9.3 kilograms per second. That's correct for m dot. Good. So remember it's dot because we're doing per second. And if you're doing per second, m dot is the same as m. Isn't that amazing? So m we can, we can mc delta t, or we could have m dot, doesn't matter. So because that's an m dot there. It's the same because we're doing one second. Nine point three times c. One point oh eight kilo kilojoules, yep, it's in the right units. One point oh eight. Two twenty four divided by bracket. Equals twenty two point three twenty two point four eight. And that's the temperature change of the exhaust. <coughs> 22.4 degrees. Question 12, we've only got um, question what? 16. Yep, we'll keep going. Question 12 is a mixer. Now, I want to mix is kind of interesting because what's happening? You've got a heater in there to heat up the asphalt. You also have a mixer to mix it all up, and the mixer is also heating it up because that's how it works. When you mix something, you heat it. Um, if you have something plastic like metal uh, um, wire and you keep bending the wire it gets hotter. Well it's the same for everything so if you mix it up it gets hotter and that's because H2 minus H1 equals heat minus W. So both of those heating it up or putting work into it which is negative work both increase the entropy. Yeah, you can you can make something hotter by putting more energy into it by heating it up with heat or putting work into it. All right, a heater heats 130 kilograms per minute. Okay, well there's a job to do right away. 130 divided by 60. second of asphalt continuously at 40 and mixer heats okay so heats available Q the specific entropy of asphalt raised by what is the mechanical power of the mixer mechanical power power of the mixer is W so we're trying to find W the specific entropy of the asphalt is raised Okay, now raised means we've already calculated the H2 minus H1 for us. Thank you very much. So we've already got this bit. And we're trying to find W. All right, so let's rearrange our first law. We want W equals, so let's put W on the side, equals heat minus. Now this thing, we could just call that delta H. Minus delta H, which is what this is. All right, so Q is 48 minus H. Now, um, if I'm going to be a bit more careful about this, what that actually says is not delta capital H, it's delta little h. So I haven't got big H yet. How do I turn little h into big H? I multiply by the mass. 
So if I want delta big H, I have to go M delta little h equals 2.166 times 48. So 48 minus 104. Gives us negative 56. Oh, that's weird. A negative number. So is that correct? Well, you remember from our definition of when the very first time we did the first little thing we had that and we had a cylinder. And we had heat, positive Q is in, and positive work is out. Right, they're the definitions for positive when the first law is written, Q minus W. So if I have a negative work, what does that mean? That's work in. Does that make sense? Yes, it does, because this thing has got a machine, it's got a motor on it, and it's driving an impeller, and it's putting work into the astral. So yes, that's correct. So, uh, what is the mechanical power of the mixer? Ooh, in a minute there, that in should be negative and out should be positive. Hmm. What is the, oh, uh, well, okay, well actually technically it's asking, a bit tricky, what is the mechanical power of the mixer itself, not the mechanical power of the um, work going into the asphalt. So this is the work going out of the mixer. Mm -hmm. uh, it's tricky. So 56. Let's see how we go. Uh, kilowatts. Kilowatts per second. Yes, we did get that right. Ooh, that was a little bit tricky little thing, wasn't it? Asking for the... Yeah. And that's great. <laughs> Alright, now we have a refrigeration system. Um, which basically means that you have a liquid which is close to its um, saturation point. Which means if you um, compress it slightly, it'll turn into a liquid. If you expand it slightly, it'll turn into a gas. And we do that on purpose because we can use the latent heat of the liquid uh, in evaporation condensation to uh, have a big temperature effect in and out. So what basically happens in the refrigerator, you start here, can you have some gas and you compress the gas that makes the gas hot. And so the hot gas comes along here. And as the hot gas cools down, it becomes a liquid because this is high pressure here. Because it's gone after the compressor, it's high pressure. And because it's high pressure, it becomes a liquid. So it's all liquid along here. And when it turns from a gas into a liquid, it lets out heat. So there's heat coming out of here. This is a hot area. This is a hot part. This is like back of the fridge. And then this liquid goes along and goes into the part where it's cool. And just here, it gets throttled. So it squirts out a little hole. It's a bit like letting air out of a tire. So the air inside the tire is, is uh, same temperature as the atmosphere. But as you squeeze it out this hole, the on the other side, it's much cooler. So this liquid comes out cool here because this is low pressure now. So this is all, all this red part is the high pressure and all on the blue side is the low pressure. So once it's in the low pressure, it's letting its heat out. So this is the refrigerator side, this is cold. And because it's losing its heat, it then um, 
expands and as it expands it becomes a gas again so so it's the expansion that causes the cooling and so on goes around the circle all right refrigerant enters a water cooled condenser so we're only looking at the condenser part now the condenser is this part too here so it's coming in here going out further up dropping enthalpy blah 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 so it's going 28 kilograms per minute kilograms per second <clears throat> and a specific enthalpy starts H1 and goes down to H2 the water is heated by 9.6 degrees, that's your cooling water here. Yeah, that's that one there. Find the heat flow of the refrigerant. We don't have to deal with the water, it's probably in the next question. So we're only working out the heat flow of the refrigerant. Heat flow, what's the symbol for heat flow? Q. Okay, now is there any work going on? H2 minus H1 equals heat minus work. This is the first law of thermo. And of course, we're going to do this per second. Surprise, surprise. It's no work. Because there's no moving things going on here. So don't worry about that bit. So H2 minus H1, the change of enthalpy is the heat. So all that change of enthalpy is um, caused by heat transfer. So we just need to calculate our two H's. So H1. is 428 times the mass flow rate 0.466 and h2 is 205 now times that number again H2. <clears throat> so the heat flow Q is H2 minus H1. So we just subtract those two. H2 is the small one, H1 is the big one. So minus 104.46 okay so h2 the little number minus h1 the big number equals q is a negative so remember with heat from before heat is positive when heat's going in heat is negative and it's going out is that what's happening here? Is heat going out? Yes, it is, because the cooling wall is stealing the heat off the off the um, refrigerant to try and cool it down. So yes, heat's been taken away. So negative minus four.
the second. Shut down the stupid cage, that's nice, isn't it? Love it. Well, I'll just check it on the thing and then we'll just put it in. I'm going to pull this one here. This one's better than you. Three minutes, three minutes. Page one is page two is two, and the water gives the difference is now. So we should have 104.066 kilo, which is what we got. Yep, that was correct. Leaving that silly web page, which I can't get back by the way, because uh, if I try and rerun the quiz, I'll get different numbers. And continuing this time, the mass flow rate of the water is a big surprise, isn't it? Because that's what we're going to be asked. So we're using the same amount of heat as we had before, which we've already got heat flow find the heat flow of the refrigerant. So Q out, which is what we just worked out, which was 104, 106. Here's the same for the heat into the water. So we're using MC delta T again. And we're working with water. So the water is heated by that, so we know the delta T. That bit's known. We know C for water. And we're trying to find the mass flow rate of the water, and we know the Q, because it comes from there. So rearranging to get M, M, equal to Q over C delta T 104.06 divided by C 4.19 just double check that's in kilojoules and that's in kilojoules per kilo yes that's good times delta T which was heated by 9.6 degrees so a lot of this is already set up for us not much work to do Is there 104 divided by 2.587 kilograms per second because it's mass flow rate, but we're doing per second anyway, that's why mass flow rate. is mass. And 2.587 is the correct number there. So that was correct. Alright. Two to go. This time it's a radiator, which is really just another heat exchanger, only it's going from liquid to gas. In the case, in this case, the gas is here. 
All right, so uh, heat exchanges as before, H G minus H1 equals heat. Of course, there's no work. That's out. Okay, we throw our numbers in. So we've got air flow, that's how much flow there is. So we need to, see, always when you do these questions, you with a heat exchange, you always got to try and work out which fluid do I start with. That's that's the trick, really. So if you've got a heat exchanger, a, rad, a radiator is a heat exchanger, which fluid do we want? So you have to look at the numbers and see which one you can deal with. So we've got air mass flow rate of the air yeah that's good it's usually a bit of a hint and it's going at temperature and temperature mm, okay so that's enough information to tell us everything of course mc delta t so we're going to start with the air that's enough so <clears throat> air da 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 air density we've got air density here um and temperature differences of the air and water da 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 so we can't actually do this about the air unless we know the specific heat capacity of the air. So we don't have specific heat capacity, we're stuck. So specific heat capacity of air is going to be critical here. So Q equals MC delta T for the air. We work out our mass flow rate per second. We've got cubic meters per minute. And we've got to get kilograms per second. All right, so it's going to be a little bit more work than just squeezing in there. So, see the 259 cubic meters per minute equals, let's go to seconds first of all. and that's cubic meters per second great but the density of the air is 1.2 kilograms per cubic meter so the actual mass flow rate would be 4.316 times 1.25 so multiply that thing times 1.25 kilograms per second alright that's our mass rate that's this one. So we have one of them down, mass flow rate's down. Uh, C, we have to look that up. And the radiator enters and exits. So that'll give us our delta T. Delta T is T2 minus T1 in that order, which is 24 minus 15.3. Seven degrees. Right, that gives us our delta T. We just need to find our specific capacity. How do we find that? Well, we look it up. Give it to get info. Go to the thermodynamic table, specific heat capacity, gas properties, no, specific heat capacity for bunch of stuff there. Oh, here we go. There. We've got specific heat capacity, um, constant pressure. Yeah, that's the one. So it's one. And that's the one. One point double oh five.
just uh, talk uh, quickly about this. We're going to get onto this when we come to gases, but what on earth is the difference between the specific heat capacity CP and specific heat capacity CV? Well, it's how much energy does it take to heat something up? But there's two of them. The reason there's two of them is because one of them is allowed to expand, the other one's not. So if you're not allowed to expand, then it heats up quicker. If it is allowed to expand, then it's harder to heat up because it keeps expanding, which cools itself down. So when the system is not enclosed, which it isn't, the air is definitely not enclosed here, then we're using the higher value because it's harder to heat up, 1.005. If it was inside a container and uh, the volume was constant, then it's easier to heat up, uh, 0.71. Right, now we'll, we'll get uh, more into that in, in the next chapter on gases. Okay, so the C for air we're using is the 1.005. Peter didn't actually say it in the question because that was a little bit of a trick going on there. So this is called the constant pressure. Constant pressure. Specific heat capacity. Okay, we're ready to go. So Q equals M. Can't see. One point double oh five. Don't forget when we looked this up, that wasn't kilojoules. <clears throat> Times delta T, which is eight point seven degrees. Seven point one seven eight. So here we go. Car radiator two five nine fifteen point two. And exit set. 24 degrees and circulating at 60. And their Q was 47178. There's our number there, 47178. So that was correct. Cool. 47. Point one seven eight. That's in kilojoules, by the way. And find the temperature drop of the water. Big surprise there. <coughs> Coolant water is circulating at 60 litres per minute. Gee, that's an easy one. That's one kilogram per second. That's our mass flow rate for the water. Okay, it's a heat exchanger, so the Q in equals the Q out. The Q in, uh, so the one that's taking the heat in is the air, and the one who's losing heat is the water. So we're going to do water this time, so Q equals MC delta T. Now the temperature drop is the one that we're trying to find. So that's the question mark. We can work out, we can find out what C was. We've got M, which is down here. And we've already got Q, which we already get from the previous question, right there. So we're going to rearrange this equation to give us delta T. So delta T equals Q over MC equals 47.178 over mass flow rate, 1 times C, 4.19. You know that one off by heart. Okay, let's see. 
and that's the answer right there. Good, that's great. And that's in kilojoules. That's it. That is um, open systems and no quiz.